Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat. It is episode 63. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining us this week, very special guest, Karen is here. Say hello, Karen. Hello, I am here. Hello. Also joining us fresh from the road, it's Kyle Bailey. It's me, and it was a very dark, damp New Jersey road, so it was Ugh. a struggle to get here, but I made it. Struggle is real, folks. We've got video games to talk about. We've got things to say and well wishes to wish and uh, uh, I have poop in me and it has to come out at some point. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about all that sort of stuff. But before we talk about that stuff, um, this didn't really work out because it's still video game related. We got to talk about what we've been playing, all sorts of games, all sorts of fun. Um clicking away over there karen uh no it's fine it's just it's that laugh mic is picks up everything (laughs) um i um man i I, now i'm like thinking of how to separate your channel out and all this stuff uh oh i could do that oh man exciting things uh i'm just gonna go first just to blanket all the elden ring talk out uh because i feel like we've talked about this game for like 18 years um it is still in vogue it's still like at the top of like our gaming is like Elden Ring stuff. Yeah, it's Crazy. wild. Um yeah. Uh so Elden Ring I am level 80 something. Uh I just I finished not finished cuz there's still stuff I have to find back there. Um I did all all the capital stuff. Uh now I'm in Mel- Mount Gelmar, Gelmer. Um and like it's weird. I'm like in this fr- phase where like I keep thinking there's not much left of the game, and then I stumble into a whole new area, and I go, "Wow, this whole area is here!" And then I go, "Ah, oh, like I finish it, and I go, "Ah, oh, there's not much left of this game." And then, "Wow, this whole new area!" So I've just been doing that over and over again. Um, I beat a really hard. Karen watched it. This boss last night. Oh yeah, that crazy the astral. Uh, yeah. scorpion skull looking guy I, I don't know if you've what? um been in the Ansel river there's that guy who like shoots rocks at you like a giant for hanging from the ceiling and he spits rocks at you anyways you'll come so. across him way before you came across the guy i fought um but he is one of those guys but he is way bigger and on the ground and not a giant baby like that one is um so it was it was pretty tough i used my mimic uh uh tear mimic tear it's a it's mm-hmm. a summoning ash you get later on it's a tiny bit spoilery so forget which I said which it. they just they just uh yes they, they took nerfed. a hit on the latest patch yeah so i i haven't actually tested it they did so to summon it it requires health instead of fp um which uh can be detrimental because you'll summon him and it'll make your health go all the way down but they just made a change where they it takes less health to summon them but they also made gameplay pattern changes so i don't actually know how less effective the mimic is now even though people say he's a little bit less effective or she Mm -hmm. if you're a a female character um so i think that kind of kind of works but i think um that 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 ash has been so helpful for so many boss fights that i'm scared that's like not going to help out as much it's mostly like It's like with the wolves, um, which is, it's just like adding to that, uh, like break meter because every hit they just add to it. So you're, you're more likely to get that like poise break. So you can just go up and do that. That that's, uh, that's all I've been using the wolf. Um, wolves are, although I, I cannot for the life of me find a grave glove wart plus five. Or whatever. It's like the one thing I need to continue to upgrade them. I have a plus six. I have a plus seven. I think I even have a plus eight, nine, and ten. But I don't know where I can find a five. Yeah. So it's like I can't upgrade them. It's just driving me. Crazy. Most most of those are in like catacombs and stuff and caves yeah. or catacombs more caves. I, I I don't know. I have a plus seventeen pickaxe. I have so many smithing stones that oh, I just you love that pickaxe. <laughs> I just keep upgrading it. And it's like, there's probably a better weapon with better weapon scaling, but something about that pickaxe is just, like, so, like, meaty when you use it. And I, the main reason I kept using it is uh, 
it so there's those guys in the crystal caves and you need to use your heavy attacks on them so it the breaks. stupid like centipede looking guys so there's those guys but the guys who are mining they're like oh, made out of yeah, rocks yeah they're like they're really hardy yeah yeah so normal weapons you have to use the heavy attack to do damage on them uh -huh. um but with the pickaxe any of the attacks do damage on them uh oh, granted yeah. magical attacks on those guys are like pretty much instant kills because they're not uh like against it but uh long story short not to stretch out elden ring for like 15 weeks in a row here i'm still having a blast with that game um i'm still chugging through it uh at work they're like hey can we start doing these like uh social posts for endings uh and i'm like a i, I don't want to get spoiled not that i really care that much but b i was like i think people still don't want to like like guides for endings are okay but i still don't think people want that social push for like ending content because i just don't think i once i like start seeing people talking about the ending they got like that and mentally is like when you i think you should put that sort of stuff out so thankfully i didn't have to spoil myself for social content um but there i'm very go. much looking to ending that game and i'm actually also looking forward to ian coming back from vacation whether or not he is going to pick that game back up or just let it lie you know yeah, um, I feel like our our conversation about last week, Ian was just not in a good spot, like like actually in the game. And yeah. I, I could see where I could see where a lot of his issues were coming from and was like, just get past that spot. Like, I promise right. you just just like play like 20 more minutes, beat that boss. And it's like it opens up so much. So I I think I think if he can if he can get through that, he'll have he's going to have a good time. And also, I during that conversation, the revelation to him that you can roll through those barrels without making them explode, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, is a pretty big one because I was of his mind as well until I did that and realized, or actually, I think an enemy walked through them and I was like, oh, I can yeah, just I, roll I think that's these. what happened. That's what happened to me is like I, I think I shot someone. Um, I shot one of the guys who's like higher, um, and he fell onto them. And they broke. And I was like, okay, those are breakable. And it was just like, okay, like that's a yeah. thing right now. But I guess if you don't have ranged attacks, that is way less likely to happen. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's I, I think I think he'll find it. Um, Kyle, anything else you want to say about Elden Ring? I also see you have Lost Ark on here. <laughs> yes. Uh real quick on Elden Ring, uh, I'm still doing mainly playing co-op, honestly. Uh, and I still will stand by my my opinion that the co-op system is not that bad. It is not obtrusive. Uh, it is very easy once you get to learn like how the system works. And it's a it's a little uh, there are little quirks about it. It is quirky, but what game isn't quirky these days? Uh, I like it. I have a lot of fun playing with my friend. Uh, and he's helping me level up a lot. And also, there's some pretty cool things you can do with like item sharing. Um, it doesn't allow you to share certain items, but certain items you can. Um, there are certain ways you can like cheese some like level. Uh, I said level weaponing. Level up. Level yep. weapon leveling. Um, <laughs> level weaponing. level weaponing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know that that famous that famous thing that games do. Um, it's just it makes it it makes it a little bit more interesting. You can sort of cheese your way around uh, some higher difficulty enemies and locations. Uh, like I'm, I think we're slowly starting to clear the Kalen section. Uh, which is insanely annoying because of high yeah. how high level stuff is, and it's just I just want to I want to continue on with the main story. But um, Elden Ring is great. I like it. I think I'm around the same level you are, Will. I'm like eighty six, eighty five, something like that. But I have not progressed through the main story really at all. I mean, I killed Renala or whatever the yeah. the. Um, I she was like the last big boss that I killed, so I'm still just taking my time with it and, and really enjoying it. But uh, to move on to Lost Ark, you and I, uh, Will William, uh, we yes. we played that game yesterday on stream for about stream. an hour and twenty minutes, and I don't know about you, I uninstalled it. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was great for like the first hour and a half, and then it just drops off and it gets old real quick. It is very pretty. The combat system is pretty fun um, and fun to look at. Uh, but I just, I very rapidly lost interest in that. 
Also, that that dungeon yesterday was was like it was half long. an hour too long. Yeah, it was. It was. It, we just kept jumping over gaps, and we'd be like, "All right, well, this is literally like the fifteenth gap that we've jumped over." So it it felt like it felt like someone told them the rule of three. And they're like, <laughs> let's do that for everything. So it's like three let's... things to lower the water, three gaps to jump over, three bosses. It's like, no. Um, yeah, it, it, it just does not have that cohesiveness of, for me, it's, it's the story. That's really what drives a lot of the games forward for me, which is interesting because Elden Ring's story is interesting, but it's not like, it, it is, I think, way more gameplay focused and way more mm-hmm. boss fight oriented than it is story oriented. But I still find myself really compelled to play it. Whereas with Lost Ark, it's like the opposite. Where I just I there's 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 such uninteresting structure to it that I just can't force myself to get into it. And I, I think that's sort of that's kind of sad. I'm I'm interested to see what like the player count is day to day. Like has it gone down like a ton since since it launched uh what a couple months ago? I'm yeah, not, I'm not sure. I'd be curious. There was actually this isn't in the news section, and Karen, I promise we'll get to you next. <laughs> um, but there was a um article. Amazon apologized because they they released content, and uh, it was like people weren't the right levels for it or anything Uh-oh. yet, and they were they were apologizing for releasing it too early. They're like, we're sorry that people are frustrated. Like we should have waited. And it's we, like we you don't like, hear that very often. <laughs> like, we've like never had a successful game before, so we're kind of unsure what we're doing. I know. Um, we have to buy a game to make it successful. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's 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 pretty much it for for Lost Ark. So I'm interested to see what what Karen's list is all about. Yeah. So heading on to the news, uh, no, Karen, <laughs> please, please tell us about all the games yes, you've been playing. So I have not. I mean, I did not. There was one. There was a couple of games I've been playing. One game. I didn't really feel like talking about, but I'll just briefly mention um, because Will of- often mentions how much I played Dead by Daylight. I do not play it as much now because I feel that the game is just taking a turn for the worse. Um, Ooh, and really? I'm not, I'm not the sucks. only one. Ever since they introduced um, the new matchmaking system last July, the player count has dropped off. Um, there's a lot of bugs and issues with the game um that are dating back to like the last several years um there was even one uh youtuber who uh he's been making a lot of uh good videos critiquing um behavior but recently actually made a video um where he was talking about um rainbow six siege and how a few years ago they did their whole operation health where they just took the next three months of whatever they had planned out and just dedicated it to bug fixes um, and improving the game and was kind of advocating for behavior to do the same with Dead by Daylight. So we'll see. Hopefully, um, you know, behavior addresses a lot of the issues with the game, Um, but only time will tell. The problem is that every time they have a new release, either a a chapter or mid-chapter release, there's always bugs and issues. And then they end up fixing some things, but not really mm-hmm. um taking care of others so i uh, i actually have a question i've played dead by daylight for like two hours um i thought it was fine i thought it, i thought it was okay this is about maybe a year ago maybe maybe um what is their? i have two questions what is their release schedule like like as far as like how often they they do updates or patches or release new content and then well, just let me hear the answer to that, and then that'll that'll sort of base off my second question. Yeah, so they usually try to release one chapter um, every three months, and they'll oftentimes they'll do a mid chapter release as well. That is usually um, patches and bug fixes, and um, you know, occasionally it'll just be like updates, like "Hey, we're still working on this other thing," or like "This is what we have in the pipeline." Um, so. Yeah, usually the chapter release is new content um, and typically the mid-chapter release. Sometimes it's new content, but a lot of times it's bug fixes. Okay, so like we're talking like three, four months for like major, major updates or, or at least content additions. Um, yes. do, do you think that the, the, the community around it is like 
is is it I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase the question. Basically, is uh the studio behind the game? I, I forget what they're called. Is it behavior? Yes. Behavior. What it's, it's okay, behavior studios. Are they sort of do you think that they're like being supplemented enough by the community whenever they do release content that they're like, we're just gonna coast? Like we're just gonna keep things as is, we're still making money. Um you know stuff like that or is it do you get the sense that like mm, maybe they could turn this around like maybe they could really put the work in and 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 turn things around well i think at this point um it's definitely there have been uh signs showing that there are larger problems um with behavior also as a company that are uh coming to a head um the biggest problem was the new matchmaking system that was introduced last summer. Um, and I think that at this point, like right now, like in, in the next com couple of weeks is like really the turning point um, mm. where behavior has been um, listening to the community more, um, taking more accountability, uh, trying to fix issues, like long, uh, long-standing issues, not just issues with content but the problem is i think that the way that they are kind of going about it you know at, at first they're very um i guess defensive of you know their work and not really open to a lot of criticism um but i think now like the tides are changing and they're they're starting to shift more towards like hey we need to deal with these major issues and mm -hmm. if it means you know delaying content like you guys got to do that you got to you know me personally i would much rather them do their own um operation health and just like not release content for the next several months until they fix all the major issues with the game yeah that's a, i mean that's I, smart yeah i i didn't even know that um you said siege rainbow six siege did that the, the devs <laughs> behind that i think that's i think a lot of games could use that uh if i'm if we're being completely honest but yeah, the, the only reason I ask those questions is because a friend of mine uh, has sunk, I think, more than like 500 hours into that game. And I know he he used to be really passionate about it. And he used to be sort of like he loved the community that was built around it. And it was something that it was it's always nice to see like friends of mine who are really passionate or into a game that I can sort of tangentially appreciate. Um, so I I don't play that game, but. I would be interested to see like if it does get turned around in say six months, think like good things start happening. Maybe the player count goes back up. I think that'd be really cool, and maybe would would uh, would prompt us to to do a stream or something to to play around in it uh, if it if it gets better. But you you'll have to keep us updated on that, Karen. Yeah, absolutely. But like with with a lot of games, what happens is when they start out very small um, and simple, it works well. But the larger you get and the more complex you get the more problems arise. So hopefully they'll yeah. be able to turn things around. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that like a 10 minute thing, but I did anyway, so whatever. <laughs> Jeez, I'm so long. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, Karen, please continue. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so Dev I have been playing occasionally, not as often, only when I get together with my friends, because that's the only game that they, they play. We, we mostly play it just to, be together but um outside of that um almost on a daily basis i have been playing breath of the wild um and that is it's not a new title for those who are not familiar um it is a legend of zelda game and this is actually i would say this is the first um legend of zelda game that i have played through most of it i am i am right at the end i'm like right re ready to do like the last boss battle but i'm al also a, a bit of a completionist so i want to go and do a bunch of side quests and and whatnot but um uh it's very i i have played a like a little bit of ocarina of time um and i think the original um so it is very different um i do like the open world aspect I like that it's not too open world, like you still have, um, even all of your side quests are still, you know, tied into the lore and, and somehow tied into the plot or like little branches off of the main plot. Um, though, well, uh, actually I'll continue with pros before I get into cons. Oof. Um, 
the... just just real real quick are, is there some issue with a mic i keep hearing I, like a clipping noise i thought i heard i thought i heard other audio um I don't know if it's me moving or no. It could be the clicking. I, I can turn you down a little bit. It's funny you mentioned that because I thought I heard someone talking and it wasn't one of us. <laughs> I don't it's have my frequencies volume that far oh, up. It, it could be coming in through from my microphone, but I don't know if it's that strong. Sorry. Uh, okay. Continue with your pros. Sure. And um. So with pros, yeah. So I do like a lot of the side quests. Um, main story has been very good. I do feel like I, I've not checked how many hours I've played, but I do feel like it has gone by very quickly. Um, mm. and I feel like maybe that's also the skill level has been, you know, I feel like I, I, it could have been more challenging at times. Um, I feel like definitely in the beginning when you only start out with like three hearts you know like you can barely do anything you know you're like yeah. one hit down um but definitely as you collect hearts it, it and you know get more used to the combat i feel like it the the challenge level is you know could be a little bit higher at times um and i think that's just about it for pro well beautiful game um the graphics don't don't bother me. I mean, it's not like blowing you out of the water. It was definitely at first a little bit, but I could see why some people have issues with it. I personally like that art style, and I think it works for a game like this. It didn't work for a game like uh, uh, Pokemon Legends because they just they didn't do it as well. Um, totally. Yeah, it's like that game had way more issues than this one does graphically, but um, yeah, I see they were what they were trying to go for. Um, and another con, minor con, but still very annoying, um, that you cannot craft arrows. And that is super annoying to me, mm. um, because you go through them so quickly. So I hope that, uh, with the upcoming sequel that was announced, I hope that they, uh, make that an option. Also, uh, being able to fast travel, but not fast travel with your horse. Very annoying. Totally. Oh, Yeah. Forgot about that. It's been a while since I've touched that game. So all I remember, and we complained about this last time or, or a couple times ago, but I just hate the weapon switching aspect yes. of that game. I just I I cannot stand. I don't know why. It just makes me angry. And I I really don't like weapon durability stuff in video games. I think it's I think it's really I get it. If your game is hyper realistic, if it's something like Red Dead Redemption. I could see it like your gun jams or whatever, but like 10 hits from a sword and the sword explodes. Like I just, I hate that so much. Yeah. So I, I, I brought that up to Will uh, actually the other day. I was saying that um, like, yeah, kind of in the same boat, like weapon durability. Okay. I'll take it, but like make it a little more durable, you know, like not yes. 10 hits, maybe 20 hits. Yeah. Or, you know, like even when it when it warns you that your weapon is damaged, like to give that warning a little bit sooner, because usually when that warning comes, you only have like one or two big hits left. I also, also I also. Oh, sorry. Go for it. I was just going to say the like it, it feels like they knew the weapon switching was bad because they added that like pause when you switch weapons, like it slows down time. So you have time to switch weapons, which makes me think like. They realized going to the D-pad to switch weapons was a bad idea, but they tried to mitigate it by giving you time to do it. Um, it actually stops time altogether. Oh, does it yeah. stop time yeah. altogether? Well, yeah. So it's like, it's a weird, like, uh, whatever that word's called. Like, co-op? Co -op? What is it called? Comp? Comp. What? what? It's cop out cop out cop out is that what i'm thinking of it's like a weird uh, uh fix for a problem that shouldn't be there in the first place mm -hmm. by having a different system but it felt like they 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 just couldn't come up with a better system uh well i i feel like because it's a mainline nintendo game that is a switch seller they're like we have to use all the buttons like we have to use every single button on the switch for something so True. they're like this is just going to be relegated four weapons and that's it and and you just have to deal with this is how we came up with it and i feel like that has more to do with it being like a 
uh, a push to be like, we, we have to show the capabilities of the Switch. Look at all these new buttons. The D-pad's not actually a pad. It's just four separate buttons. And like, yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah. Get we get excited the about worse. The, the, the button pad. Yeah. Um, that also yeah, so, reminds me, um, the motion controls, the the second or the first shrine or whatever that I did that involved the motion controls. I was like, Will, like, this is so annoying. And he's like, you could just turn it off. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, like, I get it, you know, I understand, you know, they really wanted to push the, the motion controls and moving the, the whole switch around. It just doesn't work. You know, it's like good taste, but awful execution. Are you, are you playing Switch handheld or Switch docked uh, on your TV? I'm, I'm doing both. When Will wants to play Elden Ring, then I have to take it out of the dock. Um, I do prefer playing it on the dock just because it's um, a little bit easier uh to play it on the tv but it's not the worst thing to play it handheld and are you using the joy cons yes okay i if you don't like the motion controls and you want to have maybe a little bit better experience aside from turning them off the pro controller is where it's at because i played about 20 hours of that game with the joy con and then bought a pro controller and it's way better. Oh, <laughs> like so having the it's just a much a much better experience overall. Um, I I love my Pro controller. Also, it lasts like sixty hours on one charger battery. It's amazing. Um, it's it's a better experience overall, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's that's the good thing about it is if you really don't like it, you can just turn it off. So uh, I recommend yeah. trying it if you guys if you guys have one of those uh, controllers. Yeah, she. Um... She uses the controller in docked and then mm. Joy-Con. But I think most of the motion control stuff you were playing was in handheld. But Yeah, uh, when I first started playing, I was playing it handheld. Yeah. But I forgot that the motion controller, cause, or the plus Pro controller has that. Because those marble uh, maze uh, ones that you had to do, I did with the Pro controller. But I completely flipped the controller over. So the marble was just on the back flat side of the thing. So I wouldn't have to deal with the maze. I was like, <laughs> this is better. Um, yeah, that, that stuff's crazy. Um, yeah. Karen, you want to talk to us about some Samantle? Yeah, I mean, Will asked me what games I'm playing. So I just was just reaching what am I like regularly playing? Um, because he is also regularly playing it. And I don't know if you are also playing it, Kyle. I, I've never heard of it. What is it? Uh, so it is, well, I wouldn't call it quite a clone. It is inspired by Wordle, um, uh, but okay. it is very different. Or, yeah, it's inspired by Wordle, but he, it is also inspired by this game called French Toast, um, where you uh, essentially there is a secret word that your objective is to find the secret word um, and by inputting different words so with each word that you input it is actually it's pulling the secret word from database and it is telling you how semantically similar that word is to the secret word um and it'll show you on a number scale it does go to negatives but as you get higher um you are getting closer and within the top thousand words that are most semantically similar to the secret word um it'll actually give you like a green bar with a number oh, okay. um, so like the higher you go you'll get to like nine 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 out of a thousand you're one word away um mm. and it's very fun because it kind of makes you think more um and like think about like the relationship between words because it's not just synonyms it's it's how semantically close or, or how often you might see this word together with other words um because it's pulling from different news articles and databases and journals yeah there was a good one the other day uh this is like a week ago so the secret word was speaker uh as i go out of focus um <laughs> and uh come on camera it, it it was speaker so i got close to the word because i guessed like record and microphone and mm. um all this sort of stuff and karen got close because she guessed uh president politician like speaker of the house like yeah, 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 yeah so that it was so stuff. weird because she had um all right i'm trying to focus uh she <laughs> is still not focusing are you are you, 
Are you showing nips or something? What are you I doing? I don't know. Um, so she... Uh, it got it was worse. Just, I know. I'll fix it once <laughs> I'm done talking. So it's like crazy that there's these... So we, we have this thing that we say now. It's like, oh, we must be guessing every other word. Because yeah. it like fills in the other meanings between these words. Um, it is super fun. It used to be really like janky on mobile. And now the mm. guy has like, slowly been developing it to look better and better. And, That's cool. Uh, yeah, it is. It is an absolute blast, and it'll also infuriate you. And it's unlimited guesses, and you just keep typing. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very. I cool. have to. I have to download it. Um, I. It's a web page, <laughs> so you don't even have to download. It. Oh, okay. I just I I have to browser book bookmark it. Ooh, it's it's every day it resets uh, at eight p.m. Eastern every okay. day, so you get a new semantal. Every day, right I, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was if it was based off of semantics, like the t the title. I was trying to figure out. I was like, it's got to be semantics. And then I just watched a movie, and someone said a word that I hadn't like heard before, and it's semambulant, which means like sleepwalking, or it's like it's like oh. when you're asleep, basically. And I was like, is it based off of semambulant? Uh, but it's, I think, semantics yeah, works. It's a sleepwalking that. game. Uh, <laughs> well, well, that's why I was like, but you were explaining it, and I was like, what does this have to do with sleepwalking? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. Now it's another word that you could guess if you're it's true. They you don't know there where, you go. what direction yeah. to go in. I couldn't think of the word generous, and Karen thought oh, I was man. an idiot. <laughs> oh, I have. Uh, so a couple times, they, they've been getting like you know more intense sometimes but there's been a few times where like i'll guess the word like pretty quick like in under 100 guesses and will still still go in and you know maybe he's got a few of like the green words going um and like he'll say okay give me a hint give me a hint okay so i'll give him a word that is similar but not too close or i'll give him a sentence maybe he'll use the word in and for whatever reason, with generous, like he could not. I I said Bill Gates goes and makes a hundred thousand dollar donation to a charity. He must be a very blank man. And he, he said, <laughs> rich man. I said, kind. <laughs> rich. <laughs> yeah, really nice. Like you, you go to a restaurant and you give the the waiter a hundred dollar tip. Like, oh, that's a very blank tip. Large show offy. You know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I could not think of it. I, um, I hey, I mean sometimes that just happens that way, but yeah, you get like a mind block. Oh yeah, uh, Karen, I will let you shout out Wheel of Fortune, but then we got to move on to the news. Yes, uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, not too much to talk about, but Will and I have been playing it. Surprisingly, it is very fun. We, you know, sometimes we'll just want to play like a co-op game, um, and that is usually our go-to in addition to Trivial Pursuit. But I think we've been playing. Wheel of Fortune more than that. They're also pretty it, good like games to drink while playing. Is this just like a mobile thing? Uh, or it, is it I have it on we have it on Xbox, so it's like Oh okay. it's the, I'm pretty sure they came out on the I, I don't think the one. I think they came out early cycle Xbox one. Yeah. Uh not three sixty. Um so it's like they're so glitchy sometimes. Too. Yeah, so it they're... was part of a like a Hasbro party pack, so we got um, it was like Wheel of Fortune, Trivial Pursuit, Risk, and Monopoly. And Scrabble. And Scrabble. But Scrabble's stupid because it just shows everyone's letters. Like, when it's your turn, <laughs> you, ha you have to have the other people look away. Yeah. It's right. like, this is stupid. Risk is actually pretty good. It's a little slow, but... Um, yes, Wheel of Fortune is fun. It. I think it's it's a, such a weird uh, game. I realize we should we should buy, like, Family Feud or something and start playing that. That'd be awesome. Um, yes. Yeah, that'd be good. We should have a game show night. Can Mini we game, please game do that? That'd, that'd be awesome. That would that'd be, be awesome. fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. We should do that. Yes. Uh, and we should have another Jackbox night. Yes. Also, I like we, we did try buying um, the Jeopardy for Xbox. And oh, it is yeah. Terrible. It, is, it is multiple choice. Yeah. Which, like, defeats what? the whole point of Jeopardy. It's so dumb. Um, yeah, we tried it once, and I just got very annoyed because I love Jeopardy. Because you could say, you could buzz in and then just remember from looking at one of the answers. And it was stupid. It was like, and all the past Jeopardy games, you'd like start typing the answer, and it'll give you options as you're typing. And that's such a better way to do it that... I feel I, like that's a... That's weirdly, and I know that this is like a throwback, Jeopardy as a video game would be really good with like the Kinect. 
Yeah. Like you sit three people down on the couch and then you just use a controller to buzz in and then the microphone just picks up your answer. And like, because yeah. Connect had a pretty decent microphone set up and I don't know. That's smart. Bring uh, back the Connect, Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Re add the port to the Series X and uh, we'll play it. Um, okay. So it means it's time to head to the news zone, which means I'm going to hit the news button and we're going to play the news theme. <clears throat> We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Oh, what is up, news? Indeed, not a ton of news this week, folks. But news that is important. Um, there. Uh, actually, I'm gonna hit that one last. Um, Xbox Perfect Dark game they announced a few years ago. I don't know if either of you remember this. Uh, it was Ethy. Ethy. It was Ethy. Ethy. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> uh, it was E3 2000. Was it like? It was like 2019. Uh, yeah, I, I remember the. Yeah. It was yeah. all those acquisitions, and then mm. they showed off this perfect dark trailer and all this stuff. Anyways, uh, the initiative is working on that, and people have been just leaving. Um, this article describes it as fast and furious. Um, some people did some sleuthing on the profiles or on LinkedIn for people who work there. And it seems, uh, during the last year, around 36 people have left the company, including senior design team, uh, members, uh, Dan, uh, Newberg, um, sorry, game director, Dan Newberg, design director, Drew Murray, lead level designer, Chris O'Neill, principal world builder, Jolion Myers. Jolian? Jolian. That's a cool name. And two senior system designers and a group of three former God of War designers. Uh, I guess their their names don't deserve to be read out. <laughs> Video Games Chronicle. Um, <laughs> it's just wild. Some people, uh, this article goes on to speculate that uh, Crystal Dynamics, if we all remember from the news uh, from the Local Chat podcast in September, uh, has joined to co-develop Perfect Dark. And from what I get, it feels like uh, some of these former members are saying that they kind of took over the creative control and no one was really being allowed to do anything, even though the initiative was uh, sort of this new concept of people all kind of coming together to build this stuff. Um, And then wildly, I saw this. um, One of the people who works there responded by saying like, I don't know if it was one of the people that worked there or something. So take this with a grain of salt. But it was like, oh yeah, that's what the initiative is for. It's to like introduce people to uh game development and then they learn a bunch and then they leave and move on and it's like yes that is that is what they kind of founded this company for is for like a jumping off point for a lot of new people entering mm-hmm. this the studio thing but people don't just drop like flies when they're ready to move to a new place like that's not how that sort of thing works um and this article ends with like all the people who've been crossed off right and... especially more than half of the design team like yeah. it's not normal so it seems like either uh, that game's not doing very well or Crystal Dynamics creative team is kind of overreaching and taking over and it's a slow push out rather than a um, like a nice, uh, hey, we're going to take over development. You guys can work on something new. It's just, it, it unfortunately seems like people getting fed up and quitting, which is, is not an environment you want uh, for any job, really. Uh, any thoughts on this? Uh, from either of you. Um, uh, yeah, it, you go. I, I mean, it does. It does sound like there is, uh, like you were suggesting, like it could be um, some sort of like overreach um, from the heads, or uh, you know, like some some conflict that is coming from up above, um, because like that is not. I mean, in any company, like that's not really normal for like more than half your staff to just like leave over the course of a year or like almost a year um yeah i I mean it's especially like in in such a creative field as game design like when people feel like they are limited and not totally in control um and don't have that same flexibility like they will go and find somewhere else that they can be more creative and have that flexibility and freedom yeah, yeah. I, I i mean pretty much exactly that uh people are, people are going to leave a place they're not happy in so 
I think maybe that's what it comes down to. And maybe maybe this will spark whatever it is that caused them to leave to to change slightly or 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 for the people up top to to look at their their company a little bit differently uh in light of all these all these uh people leaving but i i mean it's hard to it stuff like this is notable obviously especially in in video game development when this many people leave um but it there is also a lot of stuff we just don't know um and i it's sort of a little bit I'm I'm always a little leery of like taking guesses at like, well, it's probably this that's happening. Yeah. Um, it could just be like straight up, just like maybe these guys just don't know how to or maybe the, the people in charge just don't know how to manage people or maybe it's all this other stuff. But when it comes down to it, we don't work there. We're you know, right. we don't really know everything. Um, so all I can say is like, I hope that the new team that they're bringing on board, the new people that they're hiring, I hope that everything turns out well and that Perfect Dark releases and it's great. Like that that's all I can hope for. Yeah. Like nothing nothing is worth uh doing that to yourself. So it it seems good that these people are leaving and I hope for the people who are still there things are getting better uh and these issues are being solved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh moving on, uh back to Elden Ring. They announced hey. this week through a press release from uh Bandai Namco uh Namco Bandai Bandai Namco. Uh <laughs> is um one million units sold in Japan, which is crazy. But That's on top of that, twelve million units sold worldwide. Wow. Um, that is almost a billion dollars. Like it's like it needs like a couple hundred million more. What if you translate that to like sixty dollars per game? Actually, it's That's probably true. close to a billion dollars because. Sixty dollars is is the the limit here, or sixty seventy dollars here, but it might be higher in other countries. So, mm-hmm. it's it's I'm gonna say it's probably made close to a billion dollars, which is crazy for from software. Like that's that's a massive number for any video game company, but especially from like that's that's awesome for them. I, I'm just looking up because I saw this in ah here it is. There's an Ars Technica article putting Elden Ring's twelve million sales in context. Which is exactly what we want, folks. Yes. Um, oh, there's all That's these like graphs and weeks. charts. Just give me text, please. <laughs> um, the closest recent open world analog to Elden Ring sales is, you guessed it, Cyberpunk 2077, which managed a whopping 13.7 million sales uh, by lying to people uh, for yes. 21 days despite launch issues. Um, also... Uh, Elden Ring is also matching pace with Grand Theft Auto V, yeah. which sold about 29 million copies in six weeks after 2014 launch. Man, on pace with Grand Theft Auto V wow. is crazy. Also, I don't, I'm wondering, I'm wondering do I those don't, uh, cyberpunk figures, do they account for all of the refunds? Returns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do know that, that CD Projekt made a crap ton of money, even with the people returning it um they they made a lot of money off of cyberpunk um despite whatever whatever anyone thinks about the game um i don't think that elden ring is going to have the legs that gta 5 does not i'm not talking about like the online content that gta has become famous for now but like gta 5 had essentially two launches because it launched on the 360 and the playstation 3 and then it launched again what a year later two years later on yeah the then next gen consoles and like i know people who've bought that game like three four times mm-hmm. and i i don't think people are going to do that for elden ring um maybe you know in five years time if there's like a remaster or like blue point comes along and it's like hey we redid elden ring um maybe that'll happen but like i said before for from software this is absolutely massive and i mean props to them they made a freaking amazing game so i i am only happy yeah, so, um, sorry, that sounded very rude the way I phrased that. Um, <laughs> uh, you're an idiot, so I'm going to talk. Uh, no. That's fine. Um, so the other uh, From Software games, uh, since uh, Demon's Souls in 2011 sold $1 million in its first, or sorry, 1 million copies in its first year. <laughs> um, Dark Souls 2 is... Uh, Gotta read an art. Right. Uh, Dark Souls 3 reached 3 million in sales after a couple of months 
and as of 2020 has only sold 10 million copies uh sekiro was 5 million sales uh after a year after 2019 launch uh they have this uh crazy graph here which shows days from launch and worldwide sales so it's pretty much almost back at the zero days since launch and elden rings at 12 million and the next closest one is dark souls 3 i think this is uh at almost 1600 days after launch and it's only at 10 million um dark souls 1 is uh uh 1400 days from launch dark souls 1 had sold 5 million uh, 600 days from launch it had sold 2 million um so it's just crazy how well this game is selling um a lot of people are like from software is finally going mainstream that's not what is happening here from software has been mainstream since uh, dark souls 2 is arguable but definitely since dark or dark souls 1 is arguable definitely since dark souls 2 i mean 3 was huge um but i think it outside of i think i think elden ring is entering the uh person who plays video games on the weekend or occasionally plays video games or is friends with people who play video games uh, it's hitting those people in the way like cyberpunk hit those people and GTA hit those people. So like you could hear a mom be like, Oh, he plays Elden ring. Um, those violent games like Elden ring. Um, I think that's kind of what's happening here. It's, it's hitting the zeitgeist. Um, which is great. Honestly, it's great. Uh, I'm very I can't happy wait to them. hear moms be like, yeah, my son, you just plays Elden ring. He's so bad at it. Every time I walk in, he's <laughs> he just sucks. dying. He's terrible. <laughs> My son's playing I wish Elden Ring. Go, I wish he'd go back to Fortnite. He was at least good at that one. But. He's playing Elden Ring and peeing out the window. <laughs> what do I do to stop him? Um, yeah, so very happy for From Software. Uh, make a new Kingsfield. Come on, guys. Uh, next up in the news, there will be no EA uh, Play Live event this year. Um, good. EA put out a uh, statement to IGN. Uh, this IGN, am I pronouncing that right? I'm not quite sure. Uh, we Igen? love, yeah, I think so. I, I've never it's heard of them. Igen? I think they just start. I think they just start. Igen, Igen, yeah. Igen. Igen. Um, <laughs> uh, I realized I said that I, you can't spell IGN without ig- ignorant. I said that joke <laughs> a couple times on streams, and I realized I never expressed, that's not, like, I read that somewhere. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not just bashing like, IGN. Because <laughs> like, I was, like, panicking, like, someone, no one watches these or listens to these, is listening to them, like, man, that guy hates IGN. It's like I read that once and I thought it was the funniest thing. Um I mean you yeah. do work for competitors. So. It's true. I mean I hate them. You can't listen, you can't spell laugh slaughter without laughter. Um anyways, the EA representative um who uh anyways, this IGN thing. We love EA Play Live and it's uh, our way of connecting with our players and sharing what's new with you. However, Will can't read, so these years aren't lining up to show you everything on one date. We have exciting things happening at our world-class studios, and this year we'll reveal much more about these projects when the time is right for each of them. We look forward to spending time with you throughout the year. This Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Um, I mean, cool. They're probably going to do stuff at E3. They probably yeah. realize it's not cost effective to get all those motion graphic artists yeah. to make things for uh for uh We need games. more transitions. <laughs> yeah. More transitions. <laughs> um yeah. Um yeah, I know it's a non it's that's a non news story. They're just not doing it. Uh next up, uh they announced the quarry from Supermassive Games, uh fans of Until Dawn and perhaps mm. the Dark Pictures anthology will be very excited for this um it is coming out june 10 22 2022 it's got a huge lineup of uh cast members it's got people in it famous people uh i saw it being described i don't quite agree with this phrasing people describing it as a spiritual successor to until dawn and i know why they're saying that but to me like like a spiritual successor to something isn't made by the same people who made the original thing. Like I like if some other company made it, I would say it was a spiritual yeah. successor. But what they mean is instead of doing another anthology of these short things, this is a bigger blockbuster game with tons of with famous actors uh or more famous actors 
um, and that sort of thing. So I think it's it's not one of these short anthology experiences. I think it'll be uh, longer. Uh, it is called The Quarry. Like I said, uh, it seems to be some sort of summer camp. I only watched through it a tiny bit. Um, but it looks really interesting. Karen furiously I, typing to see I, what well, it is. Uh, um, yeah, I just wanted to check it out because I don't think you mentioned it. Yes, I didn't mention it to you because I wanted to watch the trailer with you. Um, so Ooh, I do enjoy that um, that initial image that they made that is very like Friday the 13th. Yeah. It is on the thumbnail for this episode. I threw up, threw the threw up the poster. I threw it up. Um, yeah, but that would be very exciting because we played Until Dawn. Uh, yes. a couple or more than a couple, I think, like three, three and a half, four years ago. Um, but that was that was a lot of fun um, because it was just the single narrative. It was pretty long. It wasn't short. It's I wouldn't a good say length. It was short. We it de we definitely played over the course of a few days, um, and you know, just having the the whole plot, um, uh, the butterfly effect, um, and the acting was very good. I think the story was very good. And they're beautiful games, too. And very beautiful games, yes. The the mythos and the lore around it was very cool. Um, we... I was not as excited about um, Dark Pictures Anthology, so I am... Very much looking yeah. forward to this. I, I thought that first Dark Pictures was fun. Chris and I did that for Extra Life. I thought Little Hope, I watched um, Giant Bomb play that. And then House of Ashes, honestly, what from what people have told me, we stopped right before that gets really good. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's still installed on the Xbox. So we should play that at some point yeah, and just finish, finish it. it. Uh, but honestly, uh, I'm glad Supermassive keeps being uh being able it's super massive right i'm not yes mm -hmm. good. yeah it is. i guess super giant super massive i get confused uh, i'm glad they get to keep doing what they're doing and they don't have to like change it up to to be profitable or or uh to appease some corporate overlords or numbers or whatever um i think they're really good at what they do and i'm i'm also glad like these people want to work with them <clears throat> um that's cool as well yeah yeah i mean david arquette you got automatically to horror fans that's like okay we've well, got some street cred now so we'll we'll pay attention <laughs> i think but, uh, uh, I, from i saw a brief picture of the trailer i think the kid from detective pikachu is in it just justice oh. smith yeah yeah oh, man that is oh, a nice. sweet name yeah, yeah i i think it's a it's a genre that is slowly been growing more and more over the last three year, few years where it's more like an interactive movie yeah uh more like because it is more cinematic than it is game just the way um, ian likes them yeah yeah exactly. it's ian's favorite yeah um, god and... he must hate those games <laughs> <laughs> he hates it because anyone can play it um but no it, it i i do like that category i do like this i think they do it very well um which is nice so i i am looking forward to this and to uh you know anything else that they make in the future yeah, the, I meant to bring up, we covered this, we covered it, uh, a couple of weeks ago when they, they trademarked like four or five new uh, Dark Pictures anthology titles, like all the all the logos for them. I don't think they got leaked, but people found them at the, like the trademark office with their submission. So this, uh, people thought that was coming next, but I guess this is next, and then they'll do another four or five Dark Pictures Um and some of them seem neat. They had one that seemed very thingy, uh, which mm. uh, which will be. Good. I love things. I love things. things. Um, final bit of news here. I didn't want to give it too much attention because there's this whole thing in the game news industry about giving it attention, um, which is me. Now, uh, Hogwarts Legacy. They did a gameplay reveal today. All I'm gonna say is I think it looks really cool. I'm finally. I'm very excited for a, a Hogwarts game where you get to go to Hogwarts. You get to do stuff at Hogwarts and kind of play. And it seems like they're adding all the cool stuff you want. Uh, I would advise to go check out the trailer, uh, gameplay trailer. It's up on YouTube. You can find it. Just you search on that search bar at the top. It's yeah. great. Super it's, great. It's very pretty. It's, like really pretty. Yes. It um, looks really good. Um, the sort of controversy part here is giving it uh, airtime because of JK Rowling's past comments towards trans people and just her blatant uh maybe not blatant but her uh what's it called uh when you do something but you don't realize you're doing it 
Uh, disregard. Dis- disregard. No, but like in a subconscious sort of way. Um, like naming a black character with the last name Shackleton, or like the that that one Jewish character with yeah, Goldstein. Be, I guess being like, like ignorant in a yeah, sense. Yeah, ignorant. You know, like, like not being uh, conscious yeah. of. Like that stuff. That doing. stuff's not been proven in any way. That stuff is up in the air. But her her comments towards trans people in particular are very uh out there and awful um so i highly recommend um looking into that as well but there's a fantastic article by jesse earl uh i think i'm getting the name right on uh GameSpot, uh uh who is trans herself she wrote it up go check it out it's very good uh and it has also a list of uh at the end of it because i have i'm honest i haven't finished the article yet uh, but I scroll to the bottom because you got to get to the good stuff. The TLDR. Uh, TLDR. <laughs> no, but there's a bunch of content creators listed out who are also trans or non-binary. And uh, also a bunch of charities if you feel like giving money towards that. Uh, so I, I'm just going to say I'm very excited for this game. But we're probably not going to cover it that often because it's kind of like a solidarity thing going on right now. About not giving it too too much light. And uh, But like you don't want to seem like you're punishing the developers. Anyways, mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling's a piece of crap and we don't like her. Um, but Harry Potter's kind of cool, mm-hmm. so yeah. let's enjoy that. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Which means it's time to end the show because it's time to go mm. to bed. Which means I'm gonna hit this little button and it's gonna play the outro music, and I gotta pay attention to it now because I'm pretty sure uh, that it has the, the 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 number of how long the song is on there. So I'll be able to tell you when we're gonna we're gonna leave on your on your stream deck. Yeah, my stream deck. So I'm just gonna hit that button. Okay, so it doesn't. It does. It says, okay, this song is a minute and 50 seconds long. I want you to know that. I hit this button and it says eight minutes. <laughs> why don't. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know why. You should have that, that button mapped to like a little timer that comes up on your computer or whatever. And just like yeah. in the corner, it just has a countdown. I'm doing, I'm doing the, it's like the sound, it's the sound file soundboard program inside the stream deck yeah so i guess if it started at eight minutes and eight seconds it should finish at six minutes and 58 seconds is that a minute no what's a minute and 50 oh god six minutes and 18 seconds i don't know i can't do that you're asking too much um, folks, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can click on that little subscribe button and see all of our hot, hot contents. Uh, also, twitch.tv uh, slash subpixelteam. Subpixelteam on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, if you... Saturday. Saturday, Ian is back. And he's going to be playing uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, so watch that suffering going on. Actually, I just got a report. He's in the Bermuda Triangle right now. Oh, God. He's stuck there, so uh, mm. we'll have to see if he'll be able to make it back, swim back in time. I hope. I, I sincerely hope. Um, uh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Karen, for being on. That was great. I'm glad we could figure that out. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you all next week. Bye.